Hey guys, thought I'd do a quick technique video on combing and spinning from the combs. So if you have some fleece and some combs, grab them and I'll give you a quick, de quick demo on how to comb your fleece and spin right from your combs so that you can skip the step of turning it into a rose bean, which I mean, it, it's fine, but I like to just prep a little, spin a little, prep a little, spin a little. So this is how I do it. So grab your combs and let's get to it. So let's do a quick run through on combing fleece. Here I have my Luette. Here we go. My Luette double row. They have two sets of time, so two pitch. Mini combs. You can see mine are uh, kind of abused. I do have a tine straightener. I just have to find it and straighten up my tines a bit. But for today, we're going to work with some Romney Polworth fleece that I have here. Now I washed this, I don't know, five, six years ago when I was first learning how to process fleece. This is one of my very first ones. So it does have a fair bit of lanolin still in it. So it's going to be a little stickier to comb than most fleeces would be. So while you might see me using a lot more effort, that is not normal. I mean, I could rewash the fleece, but honestly, it's not enough lanolin for me to really worry about. I can still work with this fleece. So, just going to grab a handful here. We will take our combs. So we have the get that to focus that's the cut end or the tip end and that's the cut end I'm trying to get it where you can see it there we go that's the cut end and this is the tips so I always lash mine on butt end so we only grab enough of the fleece to get it on the combs. You don't want to like go halfway up or anything. So literally, oh, there's a little second cut there. Literally just grab the ends and lash them on. So you can see there's barely any fiber there, just enough to hold it. And I'm just gonna lash all this on. And keep it all going the same way if you want a worsted crap. There's my tits. Ouch. Yeah, be careful. The combs are sharp. I'm forever stabbing myself with them. It's just normal for me, but, you know, be careful. They'll make you bleed. just about done. I'm just putting on a little bit. Um, don't ever fill it like over half, I would say, because if you get too much fiber on it, like once it starts this way, it's going to really poof up as you comb it and it's going to take up more space and then you won't have enough room on your combs. So take your comb with your fiber, take your other comb. You want to go opposites so this comb's facing up so this one's going to face sideways and just catch the ends just the ends and drag it through Oop. i usually give mine a little flick at the end oh yeah it's not going to cooperate at all today so just push it through just grabbing the tips Grabbing the tips and make sure that your fiber on this one doesn't fold over on itself. The point here is to comb it out straight. I grabbed a little bit too much of a bite that time. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take out all the grit and the second cuts and the, all the ickies. So now you can see that it's not coming off anymore. So I don't want to be combing towards myself because that could lead to some major wounds. 
So at this point, I will flip it over, but I'm going to angle it slightly so that the fiber is still being pushed up and continue to work across. Because if you don't angle it a bit, it might fall off downwards off the combs. So I'll just flip it up a bit, comb that way a bit, then flip it back over and finish. And you just keep going. Yeah, and then I just comb towards myself. Do as I say, not do as I do. All right, so there's a little bit left on there. I'm just going to pull that off. Now, this is a really clean fleece. So all that's coming off here is just some tangles and some little nubby bits. If you have a lot of uh, veggie matter in it, it will come out. So now you want to transfer from this comb to this comb. But you always keep the same comb in each hand so that you know which end is butter tip. So I know this end here is the cut or the butt end, and this is the tip end. So before I transfer, because it's kind of been shoved onto this comb, it's only going to be tightly compacted at the bottom. So I just kind of give it a nudge up with my thumb, take my comb, and now I'm going to go down because you want to be working, whoops, you want to be working opposites. So. This comb's going this way. Not that you can see the tines in there, but they're going towards me. And I'm just catching the tips. Work it down onto the comb. So you have an active comb and a passive comb. Is a good way to think of it. So that way you don't have to worry about which is left and which is right. I'm just going to pull that out of there. But you can see how the front of the comb is coming off first. So I'm going to work the top of the comb. Get all that off of there. Oh. Again, I have a lot of lanolin. Well, not a lot, but there is lanolin in this fleece and it's making for sticky bits. This should be relatively effortless with a nice clean fleece. Now, because the comb is not moving towards me, I just flip it back and forth. So that's two passes. That's all that's left there. And you can see how it is fluffed up to take up so much more space on the tines. So that's why you don't want to overload your comb. Now, I'm going to give it another pass because I can see there's still bits that aren't fully opened bits that aren't fully combed out so we go back to the this one's the passive this is the active we go back to just catching the tips and make sure your fleece isn't folding over on itself I should probably have left myself a little more room to swing I'm a little close to the wall Now with worsted yarn, you want to spin with a worsted draw, draft, sorry, and you want to spin the entire fleece from the same end. There's a great amount of debate on whether that should be the tip or the butt. Everybody has their reasons for it. As far as I'm concerned, you do you, boo. Just make sure you're spinning all the fleece from the same end. I want to spin all mine from the tip. And I'm going to spin right from the comb. So at this point, my tip is actually on this comb. So I can't spin from the tip. I'd have to spin from the butt. So that means, despite this pass being lovely and fully opened and gorgeous. Yes, yeah, see, that's the sticky lanolins actually making it stick to the combs. Otherwise, I would have been able to get a lot more out of that. But you can see it's a little noily and neppy and tangled. That's what you're getting out of it. But because I want to spin from the tips, I have to do one more pass. So I'll loosen up my fiber and then go down onto this comb.
Now I'm doing a little more combing through the fibers with this one than I normally would just because of the lanolin making it sticky and it not wanting to come off the combs. All right, so that's the last of that. So we're going to set aside this comb, loosen up our fiber a bit on this comb. See how it makes a nice fluffy mass? Now you could just pull this right off the comb into roving. You could use a diz to do that or just your hand make a nice little nest. I don't even bother. I just grab my wheel. Hold on. Okay. You can see good there. All right. So I've already been spinning some of this. I spun the comb full already. So I'm spinning S because I ply Z because I'm a crocheter. So I get my spin started. I'm going to do worst to join. There we go. And then just spin off your comb. You just draft out from the fiber that's on your comb. You use it sort of like a distaff in a way. It's just holding your fiber. Now, if you're not comfortable just using one hand, you can adjust your grip. Tuck your comb under your arm. Just make sure you don't stab yourself. And then use your one hand to draft it off the comb and control your draft. But I just find that incredibly awkward. I just go right from the comb. You control the amount of fibers in your spin when you pinch and pull. And just work your way across the combs. You can see that it's actually really nice and relaxing. I can spend hours doing this and I have no problems whatsoever. If you're working from a washed fleece, it's a nice way of getting working with it right away. It's just comb up a little bit, spin it, comb up a little bit, spin it, comb up a little bit, spin it. Now this is a really nice long stapled wool, so I'm spinning it fairly thin. I wouldn't call it next to the skin soft. But it'd probably make like a lovely lace or maybe some really good socks. Uh, it's just, it's a nice all around fleece. And the colors are amazing. They're all shades of gray. I think her name was Lula or Lulu. Lulu, maybe. Anyways, it was a happy sheep raised on a happy farm by a shepherdess friend of mine who has since retired. So I can no longer get fleeces from her. It makes me sad because she had lovely fleeces and lovely sheep. But rather than bore you with more tales of my shepherdess woes, or lack of shepherdess woes, that's the basics of combing and spinning from the combs. So if you want to just keep spinning away with what you've prepped, you can watch Sit and Spin. The episode on the Titanic movie and in that i am using this method i'll tell you a story while we sit and spin otherwise this is the basics of combing and spinning straight from the combs thanks for joining me <laughs>